Well, there's nothing more emotional for a parent than getting a diagnosis for one of their kids, especially one that requires a lot of action. Well, autism is one of those conditions. Well, Katie Benison is known to us as a broadcaster, a traffic and weather specialist. She's also an education assistant and the mother of a teenager with autism. Her podcast series is called Life on the spectrum. Katie, I'm so glad you were able to come in. Oh, thanks so much for <sighs> having me. It's a pleasure on your 300th show. It's our 300th oh. show today as well. Congrats. So that, that all kind of works out. Yeah. Take us back to uh, Sophie mm. uh, when she was born, when you, when you got the diagnosis. What was that like? It was really emotional, to be honest. At the time, I didn't even know what autism was past that movie Rain Man. Like, I had to learn everything and the same with my husband and it's a bit of a shock right and so because of that what happens is you get the diagnosis and then there's all this stuff you have to do to start getting intervention happening because of course the earlier you figure out what the problems are and get the intervention going the more of a difference you can make for your child. Well, how difficult so, was that? That was really, really hard because you've got to uh, fill out paperwork, get the funding from the government, then you get a behavior consultant, and then it's like a whole new language because you know, you're know you gonna maybe need an SLP or an OT, occupational therapist, SLP, single language uh, pathologist. Uh, then later in life, you get into IEP, an individual education plan, which happens in school. And it's like, by the time you've got, you know, all this PT and RDSP and RASP, it's like, OMG, it's very, very <laughs> overwhelming. Well, yeah. it is. So you have kind of, you've been dealing with this for years, though. At what, yes. at what age and stage did, did you get the diagnosis? How old was we, she? Sophie was three and a half. Okay. Yeah. At Sunny Hill here in BC Children's. Okay, and so when did this whole idea of putting together a podcast come to fruition? Well, I went back to school to become an education assistant, which is someone that works with kids in the school. Mm -hmm. And I thought, I love broadcasting very much. And I thought, what can I do to combine my love of broadcasting with my love of wanting to help these kids with autism and other families and put it together? And so hence the podcast was born. Because it was really, really overwhelming for me at the time and, you're, and my family. And you're just scattering, trying to figure out what you're supposed to do to get everything in place for your child. And I thought, well, what if I do a podcast to kind of be the go-to podcast for other families going through this so that they're not going to be so overwhelmed and isolated as as I was. Well, who do we hear from in, in your podcast? So this is the really cool thing. We have the experts, the SLPs, the uh, LSTs, the EAs, and so forth, the psychologists. But we also hear from people living on the spectrum. We're gonna, you're going to hear from teenagers. You're going to hear from uh, parents about what it's like and the experts. Because when I was doing my research, I noticed that a lot of the podcasts out there, there's great information hearing from experts, but I wanted people to hear from the parents and to hear from the teens. And it's a lot of fun because you're going to hear all sorts of pretty entertaining things. And it'll give you an, uh, an inside perspective on what it's like to live with autism. And I think that if I had heard that, like these teens talking uh, and communicating back when I was when she was three, it would give me such hope because it's like that was one of the things I remember Tim and I saying is, gosh, you know, if there's one thing we wish, it's to be able to have a conversation with our daughter. And thank goodness, because of the, I'm getting all emotional, yeah. um, the speech language um, we had and all the social groups and everything that we put together with our, with our team, um, we're having conversations yeah. with her no, now. No, it's near and, and dear to yeah, your heart. I yeah, can see it. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Um, tell me more about some of the conversations that you hear and, and what, what's stood out for you, especially when you get some of these, these young people together. Oh, it's hilarious. You'll have to listen to the podcast. But we asked them uh, questions about... Uh, uh, what was it? What What do you think about dating? And then you'll hear oh, dating boys. Well, they're kind of annoying, aren't they? <laughs> and I mean, because a lot of people with autism, most uh, that are verbal, uh, don't have a filter. So that's a that can be a really good thing sometimes. <laughs> They'll tell you how it is. There's uh -huh. no yeah. And so uh, yeah, the, the gee, well, I think that 
uh, dating, uh, it, if boys are interested in you, they'll they'll kind of let you know that they have an interest in you. You know, and it's just just hearing it's real people yeah, it's having re real comfort. Yes. Yeah. Well, I mean, the communication is obviously is obviously key here. But you've also had a chance to to interview some people who are sort of at the at the height of getting the word out about about autism today. Yes. Well, uh, one of the people that I'm really excited that we're going to be featuring in the final episode is Temple Grandin, who is probably the most famous autistic person in the world. She's been on the front cover of Time magazine. She's uh, been interviewed on CNN. She's had a movie made about her starring Claire Danes, and Claire Danes won an Emmy. Uh, she spent some time with Temple Grandin to learn what Temple Grandin was all about and, and to try and get her mannerisms down, and she just nailed it and won the Emmy. And uh, so, what, what Temple Grandin, Grandin does is she takes us literally inside in, her brain. Exactly, and that's what's so fascinating to hear from her and to be, have been able to interview her because she is so eloquent and so amazing at explaining what exactly it's like to have autism. I want to talk about your film workshops. This is oh, Lights, yeah. Camera, autism. autism. What happens there? So I was very lucky to get a grant. from, um, And so along with Autism BC, I created um, Lights, Camera, Autism. And what we do is we take broadcasting to help kids have fun practicing their communication skills, because communication is usually a big deficit for people with autism. And I know from myself that it can be a little bit dry if you're doing things with flashcards or you're being prompted. Okay, Gloria just asked you how you are. Now, how do you think you can how do you think you can ask her something back? You know, like that yes. can be a bit dry. Yes. So in this, what we're doing is we're providing lots of fun questions for the kids to ask each other. That's the first day of the workshop. Things like, if you were the um, only person that could fly to Mars and you could take somebody with you, who would it be and why? Or, you know, if you were stranded on a desert island and you could only have one food, what would it be? So questions that will keep the kids engaged yes. so they want to have a conversation. It's a very organic way of teaching. And meanwhile, you've got the cameras and the lights. So they practice together for the, the first day. The second day we bring in celebrity guests. I should actually hit you up. <laughs> this, <laughs> Here last, we go. Last, <laughs> we put it out there now. <laughs> but what we did was we've had um, a, a show right from CBC, um, Michelle Morgan, one of the leads on Heartland. The kids got to interview her the second day. So we talk about, okay, what kind of questions do you think we should prepare to ask her, right? And it's thinking about perspective taking. Like you don't want to just go in with Michelle Morgan, for example, and just start perseverating on your favorite topic about the train schedule, right? right? <laughs> we need to talk yeah. to Michelle about what it's like to be on set at Heartland mm -hmm. and, you know, how long she's been an actor and, oh, there's a connection. She went to this high school. So, you know, that sort Katie, of thing. Katie, your, your passion comes across. Mm -hmm. You're a wonderful communicator. And thank you so much for shining a light on life on the spectrum. Thank you. Oh, thanks for having us, and I hope that people can enjoy the podcast and we can make a difference for all those families out there.